in Germany. Hi, hello, Mario. Hi, Alain. Hello, Janet. Hello, Daniel. Hi, teacher. Hello, Roberto. Hello, Carlos. Hello, Carlos Sanabria. Hi, Maria Burgos. Hi, Francisco. Hello, Ricardo. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Sandra. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to go ahead and get started, and we're going to be looking at the first activity, which is coming from section number 2.7, section 2.7, indirect questions. We're going to listen to the audio at this moment. Okay. Or can you tell me and then follow this formula? Hi everyone. By the end of this class you'll be able to ask and answer indirect questions about a city or a new place that you might visit. For example, you'll be able to make the following questions. Could you tell me where the bank is? Do you know where the nearest ATM is? Do you know where the restrooms are? Can you tell me how often the buses run? Do you know where I can catch the bus? Before I begin to explain the grammar involved, what I would like to do is I would like to play an audio program which illustrates how this topic is used. And so what we're going to do at this point is we're going to listen to a conversation and we're going to listen to different questions that are asked about a city. Your task is to listen carefully and I will ask you questions at the end of the audio program. Excuse me, could you tell me where the nearest ATM is? There's one upstairs, across from the duty-free shop. Great. And do you know where I can catch a bus to the city? Sure. Just follow the signs for transportation. Okay. And can you tell me how often they run? They run every 20 minutes or Excuse me. It's me again. I'm sorry. I need some more information, if you don't mind. Do you know how much the bus costs? It's $20. You can buy a ticket on the bus. $20? Wow. Well, a taxi costs about $50. Hmm. Okay. And do you know where a bookstore is? I'd like to get a guidebook. Go upstairs and turn right. You'll see one on your left. Thanks very much. Have a nice day. You too. Let me present some structure at this time. What we want to do in this class is we want to learn how to change direct questions into indirect questions. And the reason that we want to do this is because it's a lot more polite to use indirect questions. So for example, if I say, where's the bank? It's less polite than if I say, could you tell me where the bank is? And what we're going to learn is we're going to learn some rules that we're going to follow in changing these questions from direct to indirect questions. We're going to learn how to do it with the verb to be. And we're also going to learn how to change WH questions with either do or did. Now let's try to make sense of this whole concept here. What we want to do is we want to be able to turn direct questions into indirect questions. And let me propose a formula on how to do this, if you will. So we want to turn the question, where is the bank, into an indirect question. And the way that we'll do that is we will use some kind of polite model verb. So in this case, could you tell me? All right, and then this is going to be followed by a WH word. In this case, it happens to be where, but it could be any other WH word. For example, it could be what time, 
how often, when, etc. Any kind of WH word is what we're going to include here. So could you tell me, and in this case I will ask where, this is going to be followed by the subject. So in this case it happens to be the bank, where the bank, and then finally we're, we're going to include the verb. So in this case, could you tell me where the bank is? And just so that we follow the pattern that I'm proposing here, I'm going to go ahead and play with the colors for now. Now let's try to make sense of that second question that you see there towards the bottom. Where are the restrooms? That's the direct question. What we want to do is we want to turn that question into an indirect question. And you can do that in different ways. For example, you can do that by asking, do you know? Okay, or using another model verse. So in this case, I'm going to propose in using this um, polite way of doing it. Okay, so I'm basically just going to copy that so you can see that it's the, basically the same pattern that we're following. We have, could you tell me? And that follows a WH word. So in this case, where? Okay, so the subject is what's going to change now. And instead of saying the bank, we're not going to say the restrooms. And then it's going to follow the verse. So in this case, it happens to be that since restrooms are plural, then we're going to use the verb to be are instead of the verb to be is. And um, well, um, the phrase here could change, as I mentioned, just like we have it there on the book. Do you know where the restrooms are? And basically, we're going to follow the same pattern for the questions that you see towards the bottom. The only difference here is that we're no longer using the verb to be. We're using other verbs. And we could be talking about the present. We could be talking about the past. And that's what it means by either do or did. So let's try to make sense of those as well. So in this case, it's a similar pattern, if you will. How often do the buses leave? Okay, what we want to do is we want to be able to change this question into an indirect question. And again, we can use the same pattern that you see here. So for, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this previous one that you see there so that you can see that uh, nothing changes or just a few things will change. So in this case, could you tell me, I mean, that's similar thing. Could you tell me? And we're going to use uh, the uh, WH question. So in this case, it's going to be how often. All right, and then that is followed by the subject. So in this case, the subject is the buses. And then that is followed by the verb. And so in this case, it's no longer the verb to be, but now it's the verb leave. How often do the buses leave? Could you tell me how often the buses leave? Let's try to make sense of the other questions that you see there towards the bottom. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to use a polite way of asking. So you can ask in the form of, could you tell me? Do you know? Can you tell me? Um, and then it just repeats itself with do you know. So in this case, we're going to use do you know. That's the second question there. Do you know what time the bank opens? So let me go ahead and write that example now. Do you know? That follows the WH word, so in this case is what time. Then that follows the subject. And one thing that I want you to notice here is that in our indirect question, we remove the auxiliary verb. So we don't include does or do. It no longer exists in our indirect question. Do you know what time the bank opens? And the other thing that happens here is that the verb in this case will need to have an S. And that's because since we don't have an auxiliary verb and the subject of the verb is singular and we're talking in the present, therefore we need an S as you can see there. And uh, well, let's do the last one there. Uh, what, um, when did flight five Six, six arrive. So in that case, um, the question could be, do you know? And the WH word is when. And uh, the subject is flight 566. Six. 
and in this case we had to change the verb to the past because we're not we're not using an auxiliary uh, like we're using the auxiliary when did fly 566 arrive in this case this verb is in the present but that's because we're using the auxiliary did so in this case since we removed that auxiliary verb that I mentioned we need to change that verb to the past form the last thing that I would like for you to do now is to practice the concepts that we talked about and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post some questions here these are common questions that people ask whenever they visit another country another city a place you're not familiar with what are those questions for example how much do taxes cost and remember that our goal is to change this direct questions into indirect questions and you're gonna follow this formula that I gave you so how much do taxes cost what well, you gonna use do you know or could you tell me or can you tell me and then follow this formula All right, guys, uh, at this moment, we're going to take a picture. Vamos a tomar una foto porque necesitamos eh, dar eh, evidencia de las personas que se están conectando a la clase y las que no. Esto viene de parte de sus empresas. Así que vamos a tomarles la foto ahorita. Les pido que por favor... Eh, no falten a sus clases porque están preguntando. Ready? One, two, everybody say cheese. Ok. Ahí está. Esa se la vamos a mandar al boss. All right. En lo que yo mando la foto, lo que ustedes vamos a hacer es... Estas preguntas. We had to change the verb to the past because questions that people ask whenever they visit. This question is right here. How much? Where should I? Where can I? Where's a good place? Estas preguntas las van a pasar a di indirect questions. Aquí están en direct questions. Ustedes las van a escribir en formato indirect questions. We're going to look at this activity in pairs. Y después lo vamos a ver juntos. You have five minutes. Five minutes. Let's go. Este... Hola. Hola. Yo creo que de tres nos pusieron de grupo. ¿va? Ah. Sí, de tres. Ahorita creo. Ahorita que escuché. Bueno, ahorita que escuché a alguien más, dije yo qué pasó. Sí, yo sí. dije, qué raro, creo que con ellos dos. <risa> ok. Pienso que en la primera dice, jamás. 
do taxis cost? Como podemos decir, do you know? Mm -hmm. Do you know how much taxis cost? Porque el do desaparece, ¿verdad? ¿Perdón? El do desaparece al momento de la pregunta, Iba. Sí, porque como se pasa al inicio... Al, do al you inicio. Know? Ajá, ah. yo tenía esa duda. Porque esa... Ajá. Ajá. Y también este... La palabra taxis, como está en plural, ajá. se mantiene con cost. Cost. Porque si dijera, ah. do you know how much this taxi costs? Yo creo que ahí cambia con el con verbo. Este. Ajá, con ese. No sé qué dice el amigo ahí. Yo digo, la verdad que sí, no, no estoy tan seguro de eso, la verdad no te puedo decir. Uh -huh. Entonces nos quedamos con, do you know how much taxes cost? Ajá, uh -huh. sí. Voy a, voy a apuntar. Igual, okay, bueno. solo aquí el, tenía la duda con eso del do it. Do. Do it. Ok. Este, la segunda. Ajá. No sé si alguien sabe. <ríe> ¿Cómo la podríamos hacer? Where, where should I go shopping? Yo pienso que, que siempre sería do you know? Do you know? Ajá. Do you know Así where? Que... Where should, where I, go should I go shopping? Como Ajá, que la mayoría es muy bien parecida. El ah, verbo no cambiaría, es ¿verdad? Así quedaría, está en presente. Sí, igualito. Ajá. Como, es como el, la palabra shopping es porque lleva go al principio, go shopping. Ajá, cada no puede, ajá, cambiar. Yo creo que sería lo mismo, do you know where should I go shopping? Ajá. Uh -huh. La voy a pintar. You know. Yo ya lo, media las había hecho, pero tenía dudas, pero así la puse. Do you know where La tercera is? dice, where can I get a map? Es lo mismo, do you know where can I get a map? ¿Verdad? Sí, porque para no lo podríamos ocupar con otro, ¿verdad? Yo esa duda tenía, en esa. Pues estaba viendo que dice, ah, pero también dice, o sea que sí se puede de dos formas realmente, este. ¿Con Q? Porque podría ser, do you know where can I get a map? O, could you tell me where can I get a map? O sea, que de las dos formas se de puede. De las dos formas se podría. También, could you tell me? Uh -huh. Yo pienso. Where can I, I get a map? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Pero la otra... Yo pienso que... De... Ajá. La anterior, entonces... Bueno, yo creo que todas se pueden de la misma forma. ¿no? Es que está un poco confuso. ¿no? Ajá, porque si decimos... Si decimos how much do taxes taxes cost? Mm -hmm. Do you know how much taxes cost? Eso you sí, tell uh -huh. me how much taxes cost? <laughs> Se puede de las dos formas. De las dos formas, que leo. Entonces, could you tell me tell me where can I get a map? La cuarta, la, la cuarta dice, where's a good place to meet friends? Ajá. Uh -huh. Can you tell me? Ajá, ¿cómo dijo? Can you tell me? O también se podría con la otra, ¿va? ¿O cómo dice usted? Este, lo que pasa es que en este caso, como estamos hablando de expresiones, eh, ¿cómo se dice? Polite. Ajá. O sea, este, como de forma educada, can you tell me? Es como para personas que uno ya conoce. ¿va? Sería la otra. Could, could you tell me? Could you tell me? Could you tell me? Where a good place? Where's a good place? To meet friends. 
Y el is no cambia al final. Uh, ¿Cuál it? No, el is. Como el aquí is. está. Ajá, is, where is. Porque lleva contractado. Ah, puede ser de la, de la puede ser contractado, puede ser where is o where's, cualquiera. Ajá, no, yo me refiero a de que en, 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 el, en el ejemplo que dio el teacher, donde está, aquí está el principio, va, ah, ahí está es donde claro. dice, uh, where are... Mm, sí, es cierto. Ajá, que, que al final, ¿verdad? Razón. Que es el verbo to be creo que cambia al final, ¿verdad? Se pasa al final, sí. Tendría ajá. que decir, Could you tell me where a good place to meet friends is? Ajá, ese, ajá. Así la, ¿Verdad que así sería? Esa es mi duda. <ríe> que ahí sí tengo mucha un... razón. Ajá. Basándonos sí. en lo que... En los ejercicios que están. Ajá, sí tiene bastante razón. Porque fíjese que si fuera de la otra forma, do you know? Ajá. Ahí sí que da igual. Do you know where is a good... Do you know where... Ah, no. Bueno, me surge duda. Eh, sí, o sea, sí, ajá. Creo que da más la... Eh, could you tell me? Creo que da más. Could you ah. tell me where a good place to be? Ah, igual friends. si fuera do you know, sería así. Siempre te, el verbo... El, eh, el verbo to be pasaría al final. Así está también sí. aquí. Ajá, siempre está al final. Ajá. En cualquiera de los dos casos. Ajá. 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 También se podría Ojalá, do you know, entonces. <ríe> Ay, sí, está confuso. Pero así se Tenía... aprende. Uh -huh, sí. La verdad es que como dice el teacher, para eso estamos aquí. Para, para ayudarnos. Así es. Y el amigo, ¿qué dices? ¿Está de acuerdo o no está de acuerdo? No está de acuerdo. Pues yo más o menos estaba viendo como también las hacía aquí, o más o menos. ¿no? Y si sí, más o menos me da como esa duda, por ejemplo, de que veo que casi, por ejemplo, could you tell me, do you know, casi como que todas se pueden ser casi con cualquiera de las, todas, básicamente. Ajá. Es como que cuesta o menos decir cuál podría ser la más indicada. Gente. Eso. Uh -huh. más... Pero yo no, por ah, lo pues... menos, no sabía eso de que Ken es como cuando hay más confianza. Ajá. Ajá, la que usted me dijo. <risa> bueno. Ya, ¿verdad? Sí, okay. All right, guys, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and check it out. Let's look at the first example. The first example says, how much do taxis cost? The answer is, can you tell me how much taxis cost can you tell me how much taxis cost or or you can say teacher i have a question yes um in this case we're trying to create some polite expressions, right? Yes. So we were discussing a little bit with uh, my friends about mm -hmm. using can or could instead of can. So which one of those could be more polite? Okay, well, in this case, both are the same. You can say, can you tell me or could you tell me and both express politeness. Okay, thank you. So I can say, can you tell me how much taxis cost? Do you know how much taxis cost? Or could you tell me, could you tell me how much 
taxis cost? All three are acceptable. Can you tell me? Could you tell me? Do you know? All three are acceptable. Hey, where should I go shopping? Can you tell me where I should go shopping? Hey, where can I get a map? Do you know? Do you know where? I can get a map. Uh, where's a good place to meet friends? Uh, you can say, can you tell me where I can meet friends? Yeah, like that. So in this case, I would like for you guys to um, look at the examples and analyze them. Now, what I would like for everybody to do is we're gonna move to the next activity. So for the next activity, we're going to jump on exercise 2.8. Based on the listening activity from the video, answer the following questions. So, eh, esto se refiere al video que vimos anteriormente, que era este video. So, vamos a volver a ver el video y pónganle ojo porque van a responder las, las siguientes preguntas basadas en lo que dice este video. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Yep. Let's do it. Yes, I understand. Another country, another city, a place you're not familiar with. By the end of this class, you'll be able to ask and answer indirect questions about a city or a new place that you might visit. For example, you'll be able to make the following questions. Could you tell me where the bank is? Do you know where the nearest ATM is? Do you know where the restrooms are. Can you tell me how often the buses run? Do you know where I can catch the bus? Before I begin to explain the grammar involved, what I would like to do is I would like to play an audio program which illustrates how this topic is used. And so what we're going to do at this point is we're going to listen to a conversation and we're going to listen to different questions that are asked about a city. Your task is to listen carefully and I will ask you questions at the end of the audio program. Excuse me, could you tell me where the nearest ATM is? There's one upstairs across from the duty-free shop. Great. And do you know where I can catch a bus to the city? Sure. Just follow the signs for transportation. Okay. And can you tell me how often they run? They run every 20 minutes or so. Excuse me. It's me again. I'm sorry. I need some more information, if you don't mind. Do you know how much the bus costs? It's $20. You can buy a ticket on the bus. $20? Wow. Well, a taxi costs about $50. Hmm. Okay. And do you know where a bookstore is? I'd like to get a guidebook. Go upstairs and turn right. You'll see one on your left. Thanks very much. Have a nice day. You too. Let me present some structure at this time. What we want to do in this class is we want to learn how to change direct questions into indirect questions. And the reason that we want to do this is because it's a lot more polite to use indirect questions. So for example, if I say, where's the bank? It's less polite than if I say, could you tell me where the bank is? And what we're going to learn is we're going to learn some rules that we're going to follow 
in changing these questions from direct to indirect questions. We're going to learn how to do it with the verb to be, and we're also going to learn how to change WH questions with either do or did. Now let's try to make sense of this whole concept here. What we want to do is we want to be able to turn direct questions into indirect questions. And let me propose a formula on how to do this, if you will. So we want to turn the question, where is the bank, into an indirect question. And the way that we will do that is we will use some kind of polite model verb. So in this case, could you tell me? All right, and then this is going to be followed by a WH word. In this case, it happens to be where, but it could be any other WH word. For example, it could be what time, how often, when, etc. Any kind of WH word is what we're going to include here. So could you tell me, and in this case, I will ask where. This is going to be followed by the subject. So in this case, it happens to be the bank, where the bank, and then finally, we're, we're going to include the verb. So in this case, could you tell me where the bank is? And just so that we follow the pattern that I'm proposing here, I'm going to go ahead and play with the colors for now. Now, let's try to make sense of that second question that you see there towards the bottom. Where are the restrooms? That's the direct question. What we want to do is we want to turn that question into an indirect question. And you can do that in different ways. For example, you can do that by asking, do you know? Okay, or using another model verb. So in this case, I'm going to propose in using this um, polite way of doing it. Okay, so I'm basically just going to copy that so you can see that it's the, basically the same pattern that we're following. We have, could you tell me? And that follows a WH word. So in this case, where? Okay, so the subject is what's going to change now. And instead of saying the bank, we're not going to say the restrooms. And then it's going to follow the verse. So in this case, it happens to be that since restrooms are plural, then we're going to use the verb to be are instead of the verb to be is. And um, well, um, the phrase here could change, as I mentioned, just like we have it there on the book. Do you know where the restrooms are? And basically, we're going to follow the same pattern for the questions that you see towards the bottom. The only difference here is that we're no longer using the verb to be. We're using other verbs. And we could be talking about the present. We could be talking about the past. And that's what it means by either do or did. So let's try to make sense of those as well. So in this case, it's a similar pattern, if you will. How often do the buses leave? Okay, what we want to do is we want to be able to change this question into an indirect question. And again, we can use the same pattern that you see here. So for, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this previous one that you see there so that you can see that uh, nothing changes or just a few things will change. So in this case, could you tell me, I mean, that's similar thing. Could you tell me? And we're going to use uh, the uh, WH question. So in this case, it's going to be how often. All right, and then that is followed by the subject. So in this case, the subject is the buses. And then that is followed by the verb. And so in this case, it's no longer the verb to be, but now it's the verb leave. How often do the buses leave? Could you tell me how often the buses leave? Let's try to make sense of the other questions that you see there towards the bottom. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to use a polite way of asking. So you can ask in the form of, could you tell me? Do you know? Can you tell me? Um, and then it just repeats itself with do you know. So in this case, we're going to use do you know. That's the second question there. Do you know what time the bank opens? So let's
Okay, now we're going to ask, answer the questions in this section. Section number 2.8, based on the listening activity from the video, answer the following questions. Could you tell me where the nearest ATM is? It's upstairs across from the duty-free shop. So at this moment, you're going to have five minutes and I would like for you to please answer the questions. You will have five minutes to answer the questions. Ready, let's go. How late do you pass us from? 20. Do you know how late do you pass us from? La tres. Mm -hmm.
Do you know? Ahí estaba. Uh -huh. Sí. <coughs> no le cuesta mucho entenderle al profe. Ay. Sí me está costando. De verdad. Si sí, después me pongo a repasar, porque no? Hay un montón de cosas ah, que yo no entiendo. Sí, no, hay varias cosas que se le van a uno. Ay, ¿no? no, sí. Pero sí, así es chivo, repasarlo. O sea, lo bonito es eso, que se puede repasar. Pues sí. Y toca porque a veces sí me pierdo. Sí. Y eso que él a veces nos habla en español cuando en la universidad no hablan nada de español. Imagínense. Uh -huh. Bueno, Entonces, sí. All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and look at number two. How often do the buses run? They run every 20 minutes or so. Number three. What other information does Eric ask for? The cost of a bus to the city. Number four, where's the nearest internet cafe? Could you tell me where the nearest internet cafe is? Number five, how late do the buses run? Do you know? How late the buses run? Now, we're going to look at the following activity. Now, for this activity, I would like for us to pay attention to the usage of the word too expensive, too much money. Evaluations with adjectives and nouns. Listen, please. And then uh, whatever um, noun that we want to, to give your opinion about houses and apartments. Additionally, you'll be able to evaluate your own house and apartment. For example, you'll be able to make the following statements. Apartments are too small for pets, but houses are too expensive. Houses cost too much money. Before I talk about the grammar involved in this particular class, what I would like to do now is I would like to play an audio program which illustrates how this topic is used. We will listen to a few people talk about their opinions on houses and apartments. Your task is to listen carefully and answer a couple of questions that I'll have for you at the end of the audio program. Apartments are too small for pets. Apartments aren't big enough for families. Apartments don't have enough parking spaces. Apartments have just as many expenses as houses. Apartments don't have as many rooms as houses. Houses aren't as safe as apartments. Houses aren't as convenient as apartments. Houses cost too much money. Houses don't have enough closet space. 
Houses don't have as much privacy as apartments. Let me present some structure now. The first thing that I would like to do is to show you how to make evaluations using adjectives. And particularly, we're going to learn how to use the words enough and to. After that, we're going to make evaluations, but this time we're going to use nouns. And at the same time, we're also going to use the words enough and also to. First of all, what are adjectives? Well, adjectives are those words that describe nouns. So they describe people, places, or things. Since we're talking about evaluating houses and apartments, what we want to do is we want to think about some of those adjectives that we might use to evaluate a house or an apartment. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write a lot of those words here. And then what I would like for you to do is to uh, memorize this and uh, maybe study them if you're not familiar with them. So for example, we have the adjectives comfortable, convenient, dangerous, dark, bright, expensive, huge, small, inconvenient, modern, noisy, private, quiet, safe, small, spacious. And I'm pretty sure you can think of many more. Let me present some structure at this time on how to make sense of this evaluation that you see there towards the left. Apartments aren't big enough for families. So in order for us to make that particular evaluation, we can think of the following structure. So let me go ahead and write that now. Following this structure, we can see that we're going to have a subject. So in this case, we have apartments. This is followed by the verb to be. In this case, it happens to be in its negative form. Okay. And then, and then this is going to be followed by the adjective. So in this case, the adjective is big. Then this is going to be followed by enough. And then um, we're going to have some sort of complement here. So in this case, it happens to be families, right? So if we look at the pattern, we have a subject. I'm going to go ahead and follow the colors so that we can see what's happening there. That's in black. There we go. So we can see that the subject is apartments. Then this is followed by the verb to be. In this case, it happens to be the verb to be in its negative form. After that, we're going to have some sort of adjective. And then it's going to follow the word enough. And then we're going to include um, some sort of complement, if you will. So if we think about other evaluations that we can say about apartments, either apartments or homes, then we can say the following. I'm going to go ahead and copy this because the next evaluation is going to be quite similar. So we can say the following. Apartments aren't, and so I'm going to change the adjective here. So I'm going to say aren't spacious enough for families. Okay. And let's do one more. Uh, we can also say that apartments aren't and I'm going to change the adjective now. I'm going to say apartments aren't comfortable enough for families. The next thing that I would like to do is to make sense of that second evaluation that you see there at the bottom. Now using the word to. And so what I want you to notice is the following. That we're just going to have different ways of evaluating things. And so there isn't just one way to do it. There are many different ways. So in this case, we're going to use this expression. And I want you to notice what's going to change. So I want you to think about what is the opposite of big? Well, the opposite of big, we can, we can think of that as being small, right? So in this case, I want you to notice what, what's going to change. So in this case, I'm going to say apartments are. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to include two small. So the only thing that changes is that I'm no longer using the bird to be in its negative form, but now I'm using it in its positive form. And then I'm including two plus the adjective small. And I'm saying for families. So what I want you to notice is that these two sentences these two evaluations are the same thing. The only thing is that I'm expressing them in different ways. 
the next thing that I would like to do now is to show you how to make evaluations but now we're going to talk about making evaluations using nouns and a couple of things will change and so let me present the formula at this time and I'm going to show you what kind of things will change well first of all uh, similar to making evaluations with adjectives we're going to have a subject so in this case we're going to say apartments okay that's going to follow a verb in this case it's no longer the verb to be so that's the first thing that changes we're no longer using the verb to be so in this case we're using any other kind of verb in this case it happens to be that that's on a negative so we, we're going to say don't have that's uh, the verb is on its negative form and then this follows enough so opposite from adjectives where we would include the adjective first when we make evaluations using nouns we no longer use the adjective first we're gonna include enough and then we're gonna include the noun so let me give an example here don't have enough and then uh, whatever um, noun that we want to include so in this case don't have enough parking spaces okay uh, so the noun is parking spaces and then you can think of a complement if you will so you can include something else there so for example uh, what could that be don't have enough parking spaces for people right that could be the complement but in this case the noun is parking spaces and quickly I want to talk about nouns so what are nouns what are some of the nouns that we can think about when we are um, you know thinking about making evaluations of apartments and houses well uh, we can think of things like parking spaces as you can see there we can think of things like closet space right we can think of things like privacy and of course we can think of things like money if you will right so this kind of things are nouns that we can think of so we can say the following apartments don't have enough parking spaces apartments don't have enough closet space apartments don't have enough privacy and the last example that I would like to make is how to use to so in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to say well this I'm going to take that example there houses this follows the verse so that continues to be the same we are no longer going to include the word enough so in this case we're going to use too much money right houses cost too much money so if we can think of this I'm going to follow the pattern there houses cost that follows the verb and then in this case I want you to notice what happened so we include too much money the last thing that I would like for you to do now is to evaluate your house or apartment depends on where you live right and I want you to evaluate your house or apartment using adjectives such as the ones that are here and of course following the formula that I presented to you earlier today and I also want you to evaluate your house or apartment using nouns so uh, once again using the formula that I'm presenting to you today and then of course you're going to follow this formula so I want you to make as many examples as you possibly can the idea is to practice as much as possible. All right. Now, for this activity, what we're going to move on, and I would like for us to give me at least five examples. For example, you're going to write over here where it says title, you're going to write your name. Here, you're going to write the sentence. The ticket is too expensive. The coffee is too hot.
the food is too cold. I want you to give me at least 10 examples, 10 examples, and then you're going to submit. All right, that's going to be your homework for tomorrow. All right, guys, good night, and we see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye-bye.